Hello viewers, welcome to Runa, taking you through the story of A-Level Physics Paper 2. And this video, we're going to go through the topic of AMF and internal resistance of a cell. So this is under current electricity and suitable for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 are offering physics as part of their combination. So before we proceed, let's first look at the cost outline for this paper. So physics paper 2 has, is divided into four parts. The first part is geometrical optics, where two questions come from these topics and a student must answer one. The second part is physical optics, or what we call waves, where two questions come from these topics and a student must answer one. The third part is electrostatics and electricity, where three questions come from these topics. And the fourth part is magnetism and alternating current, where three questions come from these topics. So it's up to you to choose. You can choose to answer two from here and one from here to make a total of five. Or you choose one from here and two from here to still make a total of five. Any of the two options is okay. So, so far, these are the calculations we have gone through. We have gone through the calculation of arrangement of resistors in circuits, potential divider rule, resistivity and temperature coefficient of resistance, and now we are going to go through the calculation of EMF and internal resistance of a cell. So, we are dealing with calculations in the, on this YouTube channel, which are got from the worked examples of this book, but the complete notes what examples and trial questions can be found in this book, Mastering Level Physics, Paper 2, which contains all these topics of and has notes, work examples, and trial questions. So on this YouTube, we are interested in the worked examples found in this very book. And if you need a copy, you can contact the author on any of these two contacts or you send a WhatsApp message on the first contact. So for a complete set, a complete set of physics two has three books. One is physics paper one, another one is physics paper two, another one is the topical question bank. Also, if you do principal math, a complete set has three books. One is math paper one, another one is math paper two, and a topical question bank. If you do subsidiary math, for example, students who do PCB, they offer subsidiary math. So if you do subsidiary math, then you only need one book, which is Mastering A-Level Subsidiary Math Paper 1. So subsidiary math is only one paper. The rest are all-level books. This is all-level physics, all-level physics, and all-level math. So now we shall start our topic, electromotive force and EM and internal resistance of a cell. So electromotive force is the full word of EMF. So EMF is like an abbreviation. So EMF means electromotive force. Then this is internal resistance. Now this word is not new to you. You have been seeing it, especially in the very first video of arrangement of resistors. The only thing we did is that we took it to be negligible. I think you remember that word that internal resistance is negligible but now in this case it will no longer be negligible we shall see what it means so let's first go through the definitions of these two words electromotive force and emf and internal resistance so emf is defined as the energy supplied by a cell to transfer a positive charge of one coulomb round a complete circuit in which the cell is connected. So the circuit has to be complete. The charge has to be positive and of one coulomb. There is AMF. What about internal resistance of a cell? 
So internal resistance of a cell is defined as the resistance in series with the external circuit, which accounts for the losses of energy inside a battery. So the losses of energy inside a battery are due to this internal resistance of a cell. So a cell itself, apart from the external resistors, a cell itself will have an internal resistance within it. So the resistance of the cell is what we call the internal resistance. The rest of the resistances are called external resistances. So you'll be hearing us using the word internal resistance and external resistance. That's what it means. So you want to derive an expression for this EMF of a cell relating EMF, internal resistance, external resistance, and current. So to do that, we shall need a circuit. So let's first draw a circuit. So in this circuit, this E is the EMF. And R, a small R, is what we call internal resistance. So, so internal resistances are denoted by lowercase letters. Then external resistances are denoted by cap uppercase letters. So this is now an external resistor. Previously, we've just been calling it a resistor, but now because of this R, it means that now it is external resistor and it's an internal resistor. This voltmeter is used to measure this PD. So EMF is also a PD. Then this is the switch. So we are going to observe some of the things as we close and open the switch. So let's start our observation. So when a voltmeter is connected across the terminals of a cell and switch K is open, no current flows through the resistor and the reason is because it is now an open circuit. In this case, the circuit is an open circuit. Now the question is, what happens when the circuit is open? The voltmeter reading V1 in this case is observed to be equal to the value of the EMF of a cell. Therefore, EMF of a cell is equal to the PD across the terminals of a cell on open circuit. Note this word. EMF is the PD across the terminals of a cell on open circuit. That one is very needed, especially in the calculations, because in the calculation they will say, when switch this is open, this is the value of voltmeter reading. So you have to know that when the circuit is open, the voltmeter reading will be the EMF of a cell. Okay, from the figure above, when switch K is open, the voltmeter reading will give a value V1 equal to the EMF of a cell, since the circuit is an open, is an open circuit and i.e. V1 will be equal to E. So when the circuit is open, just know that the voltmeter reading will be EMF of a cell. That's what they are saying here. That is the first observation when the switch is open. What if the switch is closed? So when switch K is closed, a steady current I flows through the resistor of the, the resistor. Now this resistor is what we call the external circuit, flows through the external resistor, and the voltmeter reading falls to a value V2, which is the terminal PD, but not on open circuit. Remember, terminal PD on open circuit is what we call EMF, PD across the terminals on open circuit. But this terminal PD now we have got here is no longer the terminal PD on open circuit. Is The circuit is closed. 
So what is it equal to? It is equal to the PD across the effective resistance R of the external circuit. So when you get the effective resistance, we already saw that in the first video. When you get the effective resistance, then it implies that that PD will be equal to the PD across the effective resistance, provided the switch is closed. So these switches are very vital, especially when it comes to the path calculations of potentiometers. We shall use these switches very more frequently, so you should remember that when the switch is open, it is EMF. When it is closed, it is terminal PD. So now we shall see that since V2 is smaller than V1, it implies that the terminal PD is smaller than the EMF of a cell. And, there is, and this is enough sh to show that not all the energy supplied per coulomb by the cell is changed in the external circuit to form other forms of energy. Now, why is this so? Why is, it, why is there an energy loss? So you come and give a reason and say that this is because the cell itself has some resistance. So this is what accounts for what we call internal resistance of a cell. So a certain amount of electrical energy per coulomb is wasted in getting through the cell and so less is available for the external circuit. The resistance of the cell is what we call internal resistance or what we call the source resistance and it is denoted by a lowercase letter. So assuming conservation of energy, then we shall come and say that by conservation of energy, energy supplied per column by the cell is equal to energy changed per column by the external circuit plus the energy wasted per column in the internal resistance of the cell. Or oh, from the definition of EMF and PD, it implies that this one will now be EMF and this one will be now the PD across R and this will now be the PD across small r. Remember PD is also energy supplied or energy required to transfer a column a positive charge of one column through the circuit. So this one is PD across R, this one is EMF, and this one is PD across small r. But the good thing we know that EMF is capital E, terminal PD is capital V, and PD across the internal resistor is small v. So what we are going to do, we are going to substitute because we know that V is IR. Therefore, we shall come and see that from Ohm's law, V is equal to IR and small v is I small r. Therefore, we shall come and substitute. Then from here, this I is common. Therefore, we shall come and get, pull it out to come up with E is equal to I in brackets capital R plus small r. Now, this capital R is the effective external resistance. If there are more than one, if it's more than one resistor, you have to first combine all of them, as we saw in the first video. Then this one is the internal resistance. It will be given in the question. This is the current through the circuit, and this is the EMF of the cell. So that is how they get the EMF of a cell. So with that equation, you can now go through these questions. So question one came from your name, 2007, paper two, question 8C, and it says, a battery with an EMF of 12 volt and internal resistance 2 ohm is connected to a wire of resistance 10 ohm. Roman one, calculate the PD across the wire. And Roman two, what will the PD across the wire become 
if a 15 ohm resistor is connected in parallel with it. So we shall start with Roman 1. So this one will be easily done with the help of a circuit. So let's first draw the circuit to interpret the question, to interpret the words given. So this is a resistor of 10 ohm, and this is an EMF, and this is an internal resistor. Then we shall come and say that E is equal to I in brackets R plus R. Then we come and substitute EMF, current is not known, external resistor, internal resistor. Then make I the subject, and I will be one ampere. Therefore, PD across the wire will be V equal to I R. I is 1, R is 10 to give you 10 volt. So that is what they wanted. Then when you go to Roman 2, Roman 2 says, what will be the PD across the wire? What will the PD across the wire become if a 15 ohm resistor is connected in parallel with it? So that means we have to redraw our circuit to modify it. So these are now two external resistors, meaning to get this R, we have to first combine these two. So total external resistance, then power, so we use product over sum to give you 6 ohm. After that, we shall say that now E is equal to I in brackets R1 plus small r. So using I1 because a different current, this one here, the current was I, so here it should be different because we have added a resistor. That is why I'm using a different symbol. Therefore, E is 12, I is don't know, R1 is that, R small r is that. So I make R, I1 the subject, and I'll come up with that. Therefore, the PD across the parallel, parallel arrangement, V1 is equal to I1, R1, which is this, to give you 9 volt. Now, because these are in parallel, it implies that they have the same PD, therefore the PD across the wire will be the same PD across the parallel arrangement. Then question 2 came from your name, 2019 paper 2 question 9b, and it says, Figure 4 shows a network of resistors connected to two identical EMFs of 1.5 volt and internal resistance 0.8 ohm. So that, that is it. So these are two external resistors and these are two AMFs. Calculate the current supplied by the cells. First of all, the total internal resistor, resistors, remember those resistors are also in parallel. So it will be product over sum to give you 0 0.8, 0 0.4 ohm. What about the total external resistors? They are also in parallel, so to be product over sum to give you 1.5 ohm. But we know that E is equal to I in brackets R plus R. Therefore, we shall come and substitute for E, for R, for this, and remain with this as the only unknown. So when I make it the subject, it will be this. Then question 3. Question 3 came from your name, 2005, paper 2, question 8, A Roman 3, and it says, In the circuit, in figure above, the battery has negligible internal resistance. Find the ammeter and voltmeter reading. So the voltmeter reading will be PD across the 6 ohm resistor, and ammeter will be the total current. So by now we shall re we are able to realize that this and this are in parallel because at this point current divides. So combining those in parallel, we shall come up with product over sum to give you this. Then combining R1 and the two ohm resistor, they are in series, so we shall just get the total res if total resistance as that. 
Therefore, the current flowing through the two ohm resistor is the total current. Therefore, I know total resistance and total PD or total EMF. So therefore, the current will be total PD over total resistance to give you two ampere. Therefore, ampere reading is that. Then PD across the power combination, V1 will be IR1, which will be four ti 2 times 4, which gives you 8 volt. And because they're in parallel, they have the same PD, therefore volt in the reading will be 8 volt. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be on electrical energy and power. So if you have not yet subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video such that you can receive updates when the next video has been uploaded and also if you know of any student who is not yet on this platform, please share the link of this video with them via social media platforms like Facebook and WhatsApp, such that you can all benefit as a family.